Hey guys, welcome to my channel iCode. I am Pallav and today we are going to look at one of the publishers by Swift's combined framework that is Combine Latest. We will see that what is Combine Latest, where can we use it and how can we use it. And for understanding that we will take a very common use case, a very common example that is used in almost every project and that will be sign up screen. So on every sign up screen there are certain validations until the time those conditions are not satisfied user cannot proceed with sign up. For example if the text fields are empty or user has not agreed to terms and conditions in any of these cases user cannot proceed with the sign up. So we will be performing all these validations using combined latest publisher and it is going to be really easy. So if you are not experienced with combine if you have not worked with combine don't worry at all just follow the video and I will be explaining every bit every word related to combine that will be used for this use case. Although if you want to start combine from very basics here is a link to one of my videos that I did on combine. In this video I have explained that what is publisher, what is subscribers, what are operators, how can you use them, how can you club them and a use case for making a web service call using future publisher. So this is a good video if you are starting with the combine you can have a look at it. Now let's start with combine latest. Let's first have a look on what we will be achieving today. So this will just set the tone of the video and this is the sign up screen on which we will be performing the validations. So for example if I enter something here, username, some password and then if I turn the switch on for agreeing terms and conditions you see that this sign up button gets enabled. Now if I make some changes in any of these fields so that the overall state becomes invalid then this button will get disabled. So if I remove the password this field is empty and then the button is disabled. Or let's say if I turn off the switch again the button gets disabled. So this is something that we want to achieve and this we will be doing using combined latest publisher. So let's see that what is combined latest publisher is and for that the best thing that I would suggest is the official documentation which is in the Xcode itself and that we can open using command shift and closing parenthesis. So here's the official documentation and here if I search for combined latest we'll get all the variations of combined latest here. So I just type combined latest here and you can see that combined latest with two parameters with three parameters with four parameters and all the variations that are available for combined latest. Now let's understand that what it is saying. So combined latest is just a publisher like any other publisher provided by combined framework. Now this publisher takes two parameters if we are looking at this one takes two parameters and those two parameters are also publisher. And the return type it is a tuple which tells you about the latest state of those publishers which have been passed to combine latest. So you can understand it like that from upstream combine latest got some publishers and then to the downstream combine latest provided a tuple which is having the latest state of those publishers of those things which you want to check. So this is how we will be validating our text fields and switch and I understand that it is not crystal clear at this point. So let's go into the details and you don't worry about the code. As always you will get the link of the code, the link of the gist in the description so you can clone it from there. What I'll do is that I'll just walk you through the code, I'll explain each and every bit of it, each and every code snippet so that later it gets easy for you to play around with it. Okay so first thing first we have imported our framework that is combined framework then there's a view controller and I'm having outlets for my username field, my password field and the TNC switch that I'm having. So just to remind you again this is the username field, the password field and this is the switch that I'm having. I'm also having the outlet for my sign up button. It is a custom button, well it can be a default button, that depends. And then I'm having these three properties, is TNC accepted, username and password. Now if you're not comfortable with combine or if you do not have experience with combine, you will find something odd here and that is this at the rate published. So before proceeding let's understand that what is this and why we are using it. So this at the rate published is a property wrapper which wraps our property that, that is password or maybe username any other property. It wraps that property and it automatically writes the will set block the same will set block that we write in our computer properties. So that will set block gets automatically written when we use the at the rate published property wrapper with our properties and then whenever the value of this particular property will change the observers will automatically notify about that that a new value is available if you want to do some operations if you want to change the state if you want to reload or anything else you can do that. Well in the case of Swift UI the body will automatically get reloaded if it is relying on any of the properties which is marked with at the rate published. So it is just a property wrapper which writes a will set block nothing much no rocket science over here. The next bit is view model we can skip it for now because as of now we are just understanding the UI part and the validations. So this view model is not of much use here but later in this video I will tell a use case where we will be using this view model. Let's skip it for now. 
And if you are having doubts related to these properties that why we are having username password and this is DNC accepted. So it is just for grabbing the values from those text fields from that switch. On the next line, we are having a property called subscriptions, which is a set of any cancellables. Now this might not be very familiar that what is any cancellable and why are we having a set of it. So I'll explain this in a minute. Once we'll be going through this part, our view did load. I'll explain that what is any cancellable and why are we having a set of it. So for now we can park it and we can look at the next computer property that is sign up validation publisher. Now this is something which is doing everything for us. In this property itself, we are using the combined latest publisher and this is handling the validation and everything else. I mean, almost everything is happening in this place. Rest is just accessing the value that is being returned from this property. So it is of the type any publisher while we are using combined latest in this. So I'll explain that how we are using combined latest and even though we are using combined latest publisher in this, why the return type is any publisher. So let's see that what is happening here. I'm using combined latest three because I wanted to pass three parameters as I told you while discussing the documentation that there can be two parameters, there can be four parameters or anything on those lines. So here I am passing is TNC accepted username and password. Now these three properties are my published properties which I have marked with at the rate published property wrappers. So whenever there will be a change in any of these three properties, the combined latest publisher will, will get to know about those changes and then further logic will get executed. So I'm accessing these three properties with the dollar symbol. Now this dollar symbol is used for accessing the, the value of any wrapped property. So whenever you wrap any of your properties with at the rate published property wrapper, you can access the wrapped value using the dollar sign here. So that is what we are doing here. And next we are using the map operator on the tuple that will be returned by this combined latest three publisher. And before understanding that what is going in the map, let's quickly go through these action methods. So, I mean, this is, this is pretty straightforward. Did toggle TNC switch, did change username and did change password. So whatever the text is there in the text fields that I'm assigning to username and password and whatever the state is there of the switch that I'm assigning to is TNC accepted. So based on the user's action, these properties will change. And when these properties will change, this combined latest three publisher will get to know about them because we have marked them with at the rate published. So using the dollar sign, we'll be accessing the wrapped value. And then the combined latest three publisher will be passing on a tuple based on the values of these three to our map. Now in the map operator, we are executing our logic for the validation. So as of now, I'm just checking that the switch should be on and the username and password fields should not be empty. But in the actual project, the validations can be more complex. There can be a character limit for the username, password, or maybe you can have confirm password field and you want to validate the password and confirm password with each other or any kind of that logic that will be executed in this map operator. So this map is exactly like the map function that we use on arrays, but in the terminology of combine, it is an operator here. So this map operator will return us something and then we are calling this arrays to any publisher. Now, what is that? So to understand that, let me first show you that what exactly this map is returning. So if I try writing dot map here, you will see that the return type here is publisher dot map key path and then a latest publisher something something and then something something and then something something. So this is a very weird return type, not easy to read, not something that we want to pass on to the next function. So whenever we want to hide the return type, whenever we don't want to reveal, we don't want to expose that what is the actual type that is being returned across the boundary of the modules or those kind of things. We can use this erase to any publisher operator and this will change the type. Basically it will wrap the type to something known as any publisher. So any publisher will be internally having the same return type, which we have returned. It says that the caller function will not get to know about it. So that is what we are doing here. So we are erasing the type and we are performing the validation in the map operator. We are using the combined latest three here. Now comes our view did load. So in this view did load, I am using this computer property of ours that is sign up validation publisher. And now comes the part, what is this receive, assign and store? What is going here? So through receive publisher, we are asking that we want the output on the main thread. So here it doesn't make much sense, but when you deal with the background thread, with web service calls, with, with background tasks, and when you want to get back to the main thread, this is something which is of great use. You can simply write receive on and then the run loop dot main. So it will return you the objects that it will return you the values on the main thread. On the next line, we are having assigned to. 
So this is where we are assigning our values. This is where we are listing the values which are being produced by those publishers. And we are using a key path here that is slash dot is enabled. This is the key path and we are using this for our sign up button. So whatever value that will be returned, be it true or be it false from, from this map operator that we are assigning to our sign up buttons is enabled property. So this is how we are accessing it using the key path. And the next thing is dot store in. Now comes the point that we left behind for our any cancelables. So in combined, whenever you subscribe to any publisher, you need to hold the reference of that subscription. You need to retain it. Now, why is it so? So to understand that, if I command click on this assign to, you will see that it returns something which is of type any cancelable. And if you go in further details, you can read it here that an any cancelable instance will call the cancel method. This cancel method will free up the memory. It will tear down everything which was retained by your subscription. So as soon as the scope will end, your subscription will end. And because we want that subscription to be valid, to be retained for the entire cycle of our view, that is why we are retaining our subscription. So if I store this in this subscriptions in this set of any cancelables, it gets connected to the life cycle of my view controller because this subscriptions property it is declared at the global level of this view controller class and through that I get an assurance I get a guarantee that my subscriptions will remain intact they will be valid throughout the life cycle of my view controller so that is why we we are storing them in this set of any cancelables and then we are just calling bind view model this is something that we can skip for now I'll tell you that why I'm skipping that but for now we can park it and then these are the action methods which we discussed earlier so you see that how easy it was to validate all those fields the two text fields and one switch by just these three lines and then subscribing to our publisher we can see it in action again so if i turn on this switch the button gets enabled and then we can even make some changes to play around that so if let's say if i want uh, my username or password to be empty it's fine with me but i do not want it to be enabled when the switch is not turned on this is the change we can make and if I run it again, now we'll see that the enable and disable state of the button will be controlled by the conditions so that uh, username and passwords should be empty and the switch should be turned on. So if I turn it on, it is enabled, but now if I write something, it gets disabled. So this is how you can play around it. This is how you can, you can execute your complex logic, all your validations using combined latest three, combined latest four or as per your use case. I'll host this code on the GitHub and we'll put the link in the description so you can clone it from there. You can play around, you can try different things. And in the next video, we'll discuss the zip operator. We'll see that what is zip operator. And let me just show you a glimpse of what we'll be discussing in the next video. So zip is something similar to combine latest, which combines the values of two or more publishers coming from an upstream and then returns a tuple, which we can use for further processing. So using zip, we will be achieving something that we used to do with dispatch group. That is making several asynchronous API calls and proceeding only when we get the success of all of them. So that is something for which we generally use dispatch group and in the notify method we get the callback. But we will achieve the same thing using the zip operator, the combined way of doing it. And let me just show a glimpse of it. So in the next video, what we'll do is that when we'll write something in our username field, we'll fill the password, we'll turn on the switch. Now on the tap of the sign up button, we'll make two different API calls, one for the sign up and one for getting the coupons for the onboarding for the new users. And once we'll get the response of both the APIs, we'll present this screen. That's pretty much for this video. We'll discuss the zip in the next one. A new video comes out every week, so you can consider subscribing to the channel. Let's write better code together. Happy coding and stay safe.